What's up everyone, Michael here with another topic video. Today we're going to talk about the new 4K consoles that are going to be coming out in the next two years. The PS4 and Neo by Sony, and then the Xbox One Project Scorpio by Microsoft. We don't actually know what the Scorpio is going to be called at this point, so if you're watching this two years down the line, I'm sorry, it's probably the wrong name, but hey, I like the name Scorpio. I hope that they gave it a tail and a stinger on the end. That would be hilariously awesome. Regardless, so what are these 4K consoles? Well, basically they are going to be consoles that are this generation consoles, which is actually very interesting, but with better specs and supposedly they will, you know, run on better hardware and maybe some better firmware and stuff like that. We really don't know too many details on that and we'll see when they release, obviously. But I think it's an interesting topic because this is the first time to where they've directly said, hey, we're improving the, you know, hardware of these main consoles. It's happened on handhelds tons of times, but this is the first time it's happened with, you know, the core consoles in the core market. That's kind of, you know, in an interesting way. I feel it's a very interesting discussion for, you know, hardcore gaming and kind of main gaming in general. Although for the casual gamer, it probably won't matter all too much. Anyways, game in the background before we continue into the topic is Fantasy Star Universe, a game that I quite literally just wanted to play. That's literally the only reason why it's in the background. There's a small comparison I'll be able to make later in the video because it did release in between console generations, so it did run on various, you know, different powers of hardware, and they did make PSP variants as well, so I can talk a little bit about that, but for the most part, it's just in the background because I wanted to play it, so deal with it. So, first things first, what is these consoles? Like, what are they? So, I did say that they are basically the same exact console, except they're running on better hardware, and that's kind of the details that we have right now. The PS4 of Neo is essentially a PS4, but it runs on quite significantly stronger hardware. I don't know the exact specs, and I'm not necessarily qualified to speak on how powerful those specs are, but they're supposed to be, you know, generally powerful. Now, I f still feel, because the current consoles are extremely underpowered, they were extremely underpowered when they released, you know, they were not the technical improvement people expected from the, this generation of consoles. People were expecting something like a high-powered PC, and they delivered something like a low-end PC. Like, I believe it was just barely more than, you know, the console to actually build a PC of that power to run games at even better frame rates and so on and so forth with better customization. Although that's probably a different discussion that a lot of people want to argue with me on, but I'm going to say, yeah, these consoles kind of suck. That is just kind of a thing. Now, to kind of make up for this, they're actually making this move, which I actually think is a really good deal. But first, I kind of want to cover the side that people are saying is negative about it. Now, the first thing that people think of mind is, oh, a new console, this means there's going to be exclusive games for it. Now, the good news is, at least from Word, is they're saying that old games will run on this hardware. And so if they release a game on the PS4, it will run on the PS4 and the PS4 Neo. Or same thing with the Xbox, you know, it'll run on the Xbox One and the Scorpio version, whatever they end up calling it. Now, for the rest of this video, I just want to note right now, I'm going to be mentioning the Neo because that is the only one that's confirmed. Microsoft said they do want to release a new console next year, and they're not doing it yet because they weren't able to actually get, you know, let's say, proper 4k support which neo will not support proper 4k i'm just going to throw that out that that is a little bit of spoiler people are calling it the 4k but it's just, it's really not going to be powerful enough for that but regardless i'm going to be referencing the neo from now on it's also easier to say so yeah that's going to be a thing but if they release a game on the console it's supposed to run on both versions now there is kind of a caveat to this because we've seen this in the mobile market especially with the new 3ds that came out so i have a original 3ds but if i try to run a game that was designed after the new 3ds release the new 3ds is extremely more powerful and games run extremely better on it like it is astronomically different so if i try to run a new 3ds game on my 3ds as i have it runs absolutely terrible. It just barely runs at all. However, vice versa, you know, games like um, Kid Icarus will run amazing. It's just, you know, it runs smoothly. There's no slowdown. Like, there's barely any slowdown in that game to begin with. So if you run it on a new 3DS, it runs flawlessly. And I feel like that's going to be where these kind of multi-platform games come into. I feel like they're going to be like, oh, well, we have this new version, but we have to make it compatible with the older ones. And so they're just going to be like, oh, well, we'll just make it so that it doesn't run that great on the older console, which is going to be the huge caveat to this, is if you don't upgrade, you're going to be stuck on this point to where, you know, these older consoles aren't going to actually run it. So I'm not going to say that, oh, it's a fair deal, but 
there is the positive that you can still play them. So if you don't mind lower frame rates or lower visual quality, that is an interesting topic. There's also the topic of this is going to require developer support, which means that not all games are actually going to have a so-called Neo mode or a Scorpio mode, if you please. So they aren't all going to have these kind of higher graphical settings, you know, there's develop. I just went the wrong way. Developers are not going to all be like, oh, well, we need this special mode with the enhanced graphics and things like that. You're also going to still be getting these older games or older looking games, not older games, but older looking games that run on the original hardware and that's what they're designed for. And that could end up becoming an issue when moving to the Neo as well. I have a feeling that, you know, when you switch hardware, a lot of console gaming is kind of based around optimizing for very specific hardware. That's how they get games to look so good on console a lot of the times. You know, obviously PC can extend farther, but the thing is if you have an equal power PC, you know, just comparing numbers, if like raw numbers were exactly the same, the console is actually going to outperform a PC on a well-optimized game because that well-optimized game is, you know, designed for that hardware. It's going to take advantage of every single little bit of power that it can, but PCs are also cheaper to get that little bit of extra power, so it kind of evens out. And you also can't run an entire operating system on a console unless you kind of hack into it. And at that point, it's just going to be an extremely weak PC, so there's really no point to doing that, so I don't think that's why people do it. Regardless, so I feel like that could also end up having issues with that as well to where, you know, maybe the Neo runs on different hardware and it's not actually optimized for it. And so you might actually get some like, let's say, extended loading times. We saw with the last generation of the Xbox 360 and PS3, a lot of games were optimized for the 360 because the 360 was one easier to develop for. It was, you know, running on DirectX and everything, and there was a lot more development tools. And you didn't have to use Sony's proprietary code. Whereas with the, you know, Sony console, you had to use Sony's proprietary code, you had to program in OpenGL, you didn't have DirectX tools, and all of that sort of deals. And so a lot of games were optimized for the 360, especially since it was, you know, the leading platform at the time. And this meant that a lot of PS3 titles, even though the PS3 was stronger and more powerful and had a higher potential, games would run terrible on that PS3 system. And I have a fear that this might actually happen with the new consoles as well, especially if they're not going to be enough raw power to just kind of raw force, you know, brute force their way through any sort of limitations that they introduce, which I don't believe that they're actually going to be powerful enough to do that, because even for PCs, there's tons of games that were, you know, made for inferior hardware that don't run that well on current hardware, you know, modern hardware, because they're not optimized for it. And there's a lot of things that have to be emulated and so on and so forth, which, you know, causes slowdown and extreme amount of issues. So that is a potential fear. Now, another thing that people are really, really worried about is they're saying that this kind of sucks for people who bought the original console and people are feeling somewhat cheated. And to a certain extent, I would agree with them, but not for the reason of time. A lot of people are trying to make that time argument like, oh, it's, you know, we bought these consoles and then we didn't get much for it. And that is true. But in a time scale sort of deal, this is actually generally the length of a console generation. You know, you have about four to five years to where you have a console and that's its lifespan. That's been pretty much the standard. The Xbox 360 kind of extended that a little bit. Like that console lasted six to seven years and they're still getting releases, which I'm okay with because I have a 360 and I enjoy my 360. I like it. But regardless, you know, it's something that people are kind of upset about because they don't feel like they got the total value out of their console for this console generation. And I would kind of agree with that point. I don't own one, obviously, because there's not very many games to actually play on that. And I feel like that's where people feel cheated, is there's not a lot of, let's say, exclusives or even titles in general that I would strongly recommend that are running on console right now. And I'm a PC gamer, so I'm going to be a little bit biased on this, but PC gaming has been the route to go since the last generation kind of ended. You know, they have the games, they have, you know, better superior hardware at cheaper prices and things like that, which kind of, you know, leads into a weird kind of situation to where developers aren't really pushing on consoles as much. They don't have to rely on that. And the PC market has actually grown to a significant amount to where, you know, developers are like, oh, well, maybe we should actually strongly consider this you know, platform, which I think is an interesting sort of ordeal considering PC gaming has never really been a huge thing for a while. Like it's been a thing, but like over the last few years, it's actually grown substantially because of that longer console cycle, I believe is actually 
one of the major reasons that and PC hardware has gotten cheaper and easier to kind of manage on your own. But I feel like that's taken a huge chunk out of the kind of exclusive console kind of library. You know, in previous generations, even for the 360, there was tons of games to where, you know, I would strongly recommend getting a console just for those games. And back on, like, let's say the GameCube, I have a list of over 100 games that I would love to recommend on console. And I still have a box over in my corner that just has 100 GameCube games in there that I would still like to play today. And I wish that they ran on, like, emulators and things like that perfectly because, you know, I don't really like having to get a special setup for my older consoles. But hey, I do it anyways because, you know, I enjoy those games and they're great games. But on the current generation, I don't really see that many games. And so I actually applaud you know, Sony and Microsoft for making this move. Yes, it sucks for people who bought the original consoles and they feel like they're getting cheated. But this also introduces a, you know, opportunity for people to keep those old consoles and still play new games. Even though I did kind of talk about those performance issues that we're going to run into, like it's inevitable. Or maybe some games just won't be, you know, running in the newer console, which is actually going to create the opposite effect to where people who bought the new console are going to feel cheated, which quite honestly, in the current market, that's going to be kind of what happens. And I feel like people's expectations might be a little bit higher than they need to be. But, you know, back into what I was saying, you know, this generation, I can't even think of like 10 games that I actually want to play on like PS4 and even less on Xbox One right now. Like, I guess Sunset Overdrive is one that I would really like to play, but the game also doesn't run that well. And Microsoft for, you know, considering the Scorpio and stuff like that, they've actually been starting to push the PC market as in, Games that are releasing on Xbox One that we're never going to release on PC are starting to release on PC now. And it's like, oh, well, hello, you know, all these games that I was looking forward to, I was like, oh, I'm never going to play them because, you know, they're going to they're gonna be on console and I just can't afford a console or I don't want one. You know, it's not worth it. I'd rather upgrade my PC and so on and so forth. I'm going to be able to play these, which is amazingly awesome. And so I think that's going to be, you know, where Microsoft heads with this. And I feel like their next console is going to be, you know, a more powerful system than the PS4 version because obviously PS4 is releasing earlier which means Microsoft's going to get a better deal on some hardware, I guarantee it. But for the PS4, oh dang I'm out of Photon. Well, I'm, I'm having trouble with this mission in the background if you haven't noticed. The PS4, you know, Neo is going to have this problem of, you know, it doesn't have the backing or I guess Sony in general doesn't have the backing of a PC market. And so they're going to have to push really, really hard to get all these titles. And I feel like they're going to have to really, really push hard to get exclusive titles and get titles onto the Neo platform to really sell it. Because right now, it's not really looking worth it. Like, even for the current console, even if they drop the price ridiculously, I still don't see that many games that I want to play. And so there's that kind of issue of where, you know, people are going to feel cheated. And I really hope that doesn't help, like, happen with the new consoles. At least I don't think it will with the Xbox Scorpio because of that PC market. Like they're doing this thing to where I'm going to do another topic video on this. It'll be coming out later, but you know, to where they're releasing it on Xbox and PC and then you buy it on Xbox and you get it on PC too, which means you get a double whammy. And it's like, boom, yeah, that's an awesome way to do it. Sony doesn't have that. And so they don't have that to add to their value proposition, which I think is going to hurt them a lot. But overall, I think it's a positive move because it does create you know, the first time ever to where they have two generations, essentially two generations right next to each other, because, you know, we do have their word on to where when they started this generation, they're like, oh, well, we're going to make, you know, these consoles last 10 years. And it was like, nobody, nobody saw them doing that. And so this is the approach that they're going for that, as they're going to be able to make these games last for 10 years without having to be like, oh, well, now you have to go on legacy hardware, like to play a GameCube game. I have to make sure I have all the hauled hardware and stuff like that. Like, I have a Wii, too, I guess. I could play it on a Wii, so I guess that's a terrible example. To play a PS1 title, unless I want to download it through an emulator that actually has, you know, issues on, like, a PS3 and, you know, PSP and stuff like that, you know, those emulated versions do have issues. So if I want to play the native version, I either have to get a really well-programmed emulator running, which do exist, so please ignore it for this argument, but if I want to play like a PS1 original on the, you know, original hardware, I have to go through, get, you know, commodium cables, I have to get either a converter or a new monitor or a new TV or something like that. And I have to make sure all my controllers work. I have to fiddle with the cords because those, those cords back then sucked. <laughs> all the cords would always break at the wire and things like that. So they wouldn't plug in properly and stuff like that. And it's just like, yeah, it's, it's a hassle. And so I've always kind of praised PC gaming in the fact that, you know, it's infinite legacy. 
Like, I'm playing a game from 2006, and one of the comparisons that you can make with Fantasy Star Universe that I didn't make before is that this did run on multiple versions of hardware. You know, it ran on a PS2, it ran on PC, and it ran on 360. Now, the caveat to that is the PS2 version actually looked the worst. Obviously, it ran at the lowest resolution, it had some effects that had to be removed, and when you were playing online, you couldn't play with multiple characters having multiple spells, and so they kind of capped the spells, and they later had to do that for the 360 version, when they released larger spells and stuff like that too. So, you know, there were limitations. Obviously, the PC version ended up being the master version because, you know, sooner or later, it was just the most powerful. But then they ended up shutting down the servers, which, you know, that's why I'm playing the game single play right now because the servers are literally not online. So that's kind of unrelated, but that's a thing that happened. But they were able to make, you know, the games run on multiple versions of hardware. And currently, Fantasy Star Online 2 also does the same thing. It runs on PS4, it runs on PC, and it runs on Vita. Now, the PC version obviously looks the best, and it runs the best, and it has a frame cap of infinite. Like, you can literally run that game at 300 FPS if you want to, and I have seen people running it at really insane frame rates, and even I can get some pretty high frame rates. So the game runs fairly well if you, you know, set up your settings correctly. But it does run on multiple pieces of hardware, and that is a thing that can happen. And it seems like a lot of developers have kind of forgotten that over the last few years for some random reason. And, you know, even... A video that I'm working on for another Sonic game, like even the old PC ports for Sonic are actually fairly decent. Like they run perfectly fine and they run well, like they have uncapped frame rates and everything. So like this isn't a new thing to run it on new hardware. And we've seen this kind of incremental upgrades for since forever. You know, new generations of consoles have always been a thing. Like let's say the Sega Genesis even, you know, the newer generation of the Sega Genesis had slightly better hardware. The newer versions of, let's say, the PSP is probably the best example. The PSP version of Fantasy Star Universe or whatever, Fantasy Star Portable series, those games actually run amazing on the, or amazingly better, on the 3000 version or the second and third generation of the PSP. But I have an original one, which means that the loading times are actually extremely terrible and the games don't run as well. As in, I have to play them at like 20 FPS instead of the 30 FPS that the, you know, 2000 version runs in because it had better hardware. So this isn't new. This isn't a new thing. What's new is that we're actually seeing a system to where they're releasing a console, but they're allowing you to play your older games on it, which I think is really, really interesting. Now, my biggest fears with this is that they're going to end up holding back, you know, graphical fidelity for the sake of older consoles. But one thing that's really interesting is they might actually introduce a system to where there's you know, new settings. We might actually see, you know, settings like I believe GTA had settings in the game to where it's like, oh, you could turn on, you know, things like, let's say, ambient occlusion or antistropic, anti words, uh, filtering and, you know, anti aliasing and things like that. Like, we might actually see those settings legitimately in console games from now on. Like, after these consoles release, that's going to be something that we might actually see a lot. But overall, we have to just kind of see where they go. Now, as a value proposition, obviously, you know, as I look at these sort of things as, you know, value proposition, I don't think the console is going to be worth it right off the bat. You know, unless you're somebody who doesn't own one of the consoles already, which I don't, and you really, really want to play a lot of those games, maybe it will be. And obviously, they're going to have some sales and things like that. But maybe the original consoles will actually go cheaper. And maybe, you know, that'll be a better option for you and stuff like that. Um, obviously, I recommend buying the better hardware version because just that's going to be better. There's no way around that. But regardless, you know, I don't really think it's going to be worth buying into right away. And I feel like a early adopter is going to be kind of screwed over in the deal because by the time there's enough games on that specific platform, like let's say there's enough games with Neo compatibility or whatever introduced, you know, the price is probably going to drop or maybe there's going to be more games out that are going to be available and stuff like that. So in the future, it might actually be a great value proposition. It might be a great way for the kind of console industry to go, you know, into more of that PC sort of market to where, you know, you can upgrade your console. You know, they've been talking about that for quite a while and people were speculating. That's what the, well, when they were talking about the Xbox One and PS4 releasing, everyone thought that was going to be the case and it ended up not being. But this is, this is kind of that sort of route. So yeah, my impressions of them, you know, the kind of announcement and stuff like that is interesting to me. And that's kind of like my conclusion on it. It's, it's very interesting, but we're really going to have to see where it goes. And I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal as people are trying to make it. I have a feeling it's going to end up like the, you know, PSP or new 3DS to where 
the new 3DS is out and it has games that are compatible with it, but there's not very many that really benefit from it. Like, yes, there's a bunch of games that do because it has a second joystick on the new 3DS, but we're not getting something as drastic as that with the new console. We're just getting, you know, better graphics fidelity and, you know, better hardware, which means games will run at higher frame rates, which I will enjoy that. I don't mind playing games at 30 FPS, but if I can play at 60 FPS, I will. Like, that is just a thing that I will try to do for everything because it just it feels better to play and it's more responsive and so on and so forth topic for another video but ultimately that's kind of my conclusion on it is you know i think it's an interesting topic and we're gonna have to see where it goes i don't think it's gonna be worth it and i think in the long run you know they're gonna end up having to do a new console and stuff like that anyways or maybe this will be the last console you know maybe this is a sign that this is the last console generation so you know, what do you guys think? Just go ahead and leave that in the comments and I will try to reply to whoever I, you know, see down there because I'm interested in what other people think and I've been checking out some other, you know, opinions and things like that. I haven't watched too many because obviously when I'm doing my own content, I'm always like, well, I want to get my pure impressions out first and then I'll come back to it maybe later if I, you know, see some other opinions I enjoy. But, you know, overall, that's kind of my general opinion, so... Anyways, that's going to be me for this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. Leave those comments down below what you guys think of these new consoles, and will anybody be buying them? Because I, I probably won't, to be honest. You know, maybe I'm a little bit biased on this because, you know, I won't be buying one of these consoles, I don't think. At least not yet. Maybe I will in the future. Like, maybe way in the future. But, you know, I have a PC that runs everything, and I need to upgrade that first because, obviously, I do videos and things like that, and I could use some better hardware. And if you're interested in more of some other kind of topic videos, you can end up checking those out or check out my reviews, which this is actually the first video of my every other day recording schedule that I'm starting up, which is going to be an interesting little experiment for a while. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep it up, but I've been, you know, doing a lot of writing for videos and things like that because I'm pre-scripting these now and stuff like that, which not, not really pre-scripting, I would say. That's kind of a strong word, scripting. But rather, I kind of go through the topic in my head over and over again, do some writing, and I retake these videos over and over again. So, yeah, this is like take number three of this video. But, yeah, so I have, you know, a lot of videos coming out, and that's kind of where my E3 footage is. Just in case anybody's wondering, oh, where's your E3 coverage? Because everyone's doing, like, E3 stuff right now. Um, I didn't have time to actually go through all the E3 stuff. Like, I watched the conferences after a while, and I'm still working on Microsoft's. I'm, like, halfway through it. I haven't gone through Sony's all the way yet and stuff like that, so I'm still kind of going through but there's going to be a few topics that will be popping up over you know the next few days basically or the next week or two that's going to be from e3 there's not too many things i'm interested in like i'm not going to be talking about specific games like a lot of people have i want to talk about bloodstained which i'm super freaking hyped for but that's you know a topic for another video that'll probably come out next week because it's not really related to e3 but it was playable at e3 and i wasn't there to play it which makes me super depressed because i'm overly excited for that one anyways See you guys in the next video, and I'm going to finish up this mission and then probably play a different game because I'm actually getting sort of bored of this game already. This is a game I have infinite nostalgia for, but I can't play it for too long. So that's a thing. <laughs>